The Death of Superman, released in 2018, rated PG-13, coming in at 81 minutes, directed by Sam Liu and Jake Costiera, written by Peter Tomasi. With a voice cast that includes Jerry O'Connell, Rebecca Romaine, Rayan Wilson, Rosario Dawson, Nathan Fillion, Christopher Gorham, Matt Ladder, Shamir Moore, and Jason O'Mara. That's right, children of the screen, your friendly neighborhood nerds come here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the newest animated feature film from DC, The Death of Superman, based on the epic Death of Superman event from the 90s. And if you watched my video that I put out earlier this week on Superman Doomsday, DC Animation's first attempt to do this story, then you might have seen that I wasn't exactly super excited for this movie. I'll briefly go over the things that gave me trepidation uh, before we jump into my thoughts on the film itself. So first off, this film is in the same continuity as all of the DC animated films that have come out since uh, Justice League War. And while I've liked those films a lot more than some other people, they definitely have some big problems. Uh, the animation quality has steadily just gone down. Uh, for a lot of these stories, the writing is not particularly strong. Most of them, their best quality seems to be in the action sequences when it comes to the direction and the animation itself. But even the character models, which are based on New 52 designs, which some of them I really like, some of those designs I don't like, but they never really, even the ones that are cool in New 52, don't really work as well in this animation style. And specifically, Superman's costume, when it's put into a actual like moving image from New 52, is really not great. And more specifically as to why I was worried about this particular movie and not exactly that excited for it, well, this falls into that continuity. However, in all the previous films, Wonder Woman and Superman have been a couple, whereas in the classic story and in the trailer for this movie, we see that Lois and Clark are together. So that's weird. Like, it doesn't feel like they would have had enough time to build up the relationship in a way to make Superman's death meaningful in the same way that it is in the book. Um... Beyond that, there's just a lot of other little things that kind of made us nervous. Obviously, in the original book, uh, Doomsday ends up fighting the Justice League of America, which consists of, like, you know, Booster Gold, Blue Beetle, uh, Guy Gardner, like a bunch of those kind of characters, and in this it's replaced with the Justice League proper, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but was definitely kind of a weird and off-putting thing going into it. And again, more than anything else, I think the biggest thing is that, like, I was really interested to see what they did with this when I first heard about it, because while I like Superman Doomsday, as I said in that video, it's not a great representation of the source material, and getting to see something that was a little bit closer to that, I was really excited for. However, when the trailer came out and I realized it was in this continuity and that all the characters were in these costumes, they took what is kind of like one of the most iconic Superman stories and just, like, muddied the imagery to the point where, like, even when they would, in the trailer, clearly are referencing things from the book, it doesn't look nearly as iconic as the book does, because it's a, not only is it, like, not the traditional Superman, it's, like, not the Superman we have anymore. And that's my other issue with, like, them still doing things in this universe, is that, like, in the comics now, we're at least a couple of years removed uh, from those costume designs, for the most part. Like, with Superman, we're quite a bit past that, like, at least five years. But we're still using these costumes, and it's like, I don't understand why the characters in there just don't have costume upgrades. Because then again, like, not only would they look more like the current characters, they would look more iconic. Like, because at this point, like, New 52 changed everything up, and in Rebirth, we've gone back to a more iconic design. And I really don't know why they're not doing that in these DC animated movies, especially this one, where the iconic imagery is so important. Like, even if they had just started doing it in this film, I don't think anyone would have had a problem with that. It wouldn't have been a big issue. It's like a throwaway line. Right on. So those were my problems that I foresaw with this movie based on my preconceived notions of what it was going to be, which I am very happy to say were extremely wrong. Um, I definitely enjoyed this film, guys. I think this might be one of the best films coming out of DC Animation that's like set in this continuity. I really enjoyed it. The film definitely still has some problems. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but man, did it just blow my expectations out of the frickin' water. As always, we're going to start off by going through the things that I did not like in this film, which usually are 
far greater and outnumber the things that I liked. However, with this film, I'm going to keep it to three because most of the things that I didn't like were either byproducts of these three main things or kind of fall into that same category. So, number one thing that I don't like. Yep, it's the animation and the character designs. Now, don't get me wrong, as always, with these films, the action is pretty cool. And in fact, I would say the action in this one has definitely upped its game since the last couple of movies that they've done. Uh, but in general, just the general style of the animation still looks extremely cheap, and you would think with this being one of DC's more iconic stories that they've animated, they would put a little bit more polish into it. Um, it does look a little bit better than some of the previous movies like Justice League Dark or Batman Harley Quinn, but it still looks fairly cheap, and beyond that, the New 52 character designs really are the thing that hurt this film the most. Because as I said previously, like... This story is iconic. The imagery from it is more iconic than anything because let's be honest here, the main, like this, is mostly just a fight. Like it is a multi-issue lead up to a fight and then a slugfest. There's not actually that much story there. It's more about the visuals and like the visceral nature of it, okay? So we lose a lot of the kind of iconic visuals because of these designs, and even beyond the things that are just like iconic imagery, a lot of the other things just it doesn't work that well. Like specifically, I've always been a big fan of the way that Doomsday looks when he first like a busts out where he's like in the green and he's got one arm behind his back i love it he's got one arm behind his back and he's still just killing everything he comes in contact with it really like pushes forward the idea of him being a prisoner with this whole suit and it looks really cool and in this they have like a new 52 spin on it and it just looks bland and boring and stupid uh Beyond that, like, again, some of the characters look fine. Like, Batman is kind of, well, yeah, he looks like Batman. Flash is fine. Green Lantern still looks pretty cool. But in a lot of ways, the visuals and the animation style and the character design do distract from the monumental kind of iconography that this movie should encapsulate and the power that comes along with those visuals. There's a reason why iconic visuals stick in the public subconscious as long as they do. And while this definitely pays tribute to a lot of those visuals, like the actual impact of it is lost because of the visual representation that we're seeing in this movie. Number two, Funeral for a Friend. Now again, I don't expect this movie to do everything that they did in the comics, because as I've already said, the main Death of Superman book is more or less just a big punch fest. For me, all the things that really make that event and that whole story worthwhile are the things that come out of Superman's death. Through the Funeral for a Friend story arc, you know, kind of the different tie-ins they did and all that kind of stuff, and even the stuff that followed it, it's seeing the world reacting to Superman's death, seeing them try to fill the void. Those are all the things that I really enjoy, but specifically, I was hoping for the iconic image of the Justice League carrying Superman's casket, and we didn't get that. Instead, we just got them kind of sitting idly by, and I think that that's just not cool. Um, there's a lot of things they did dealing with the death of Superman in this movie that do really work. Like, it's some of the best stuff in the movie but I feel like it could have been really pushed to the next level if they had just incorporated a few more of those more iconic moments or beats from the actual comic book story. Number three, Lex Luthor. You think it might kill Superman? It would save me a lot of trouble. All right, guys. So there's been a lot of different interpretations of Lex Luthor. Some of them I've liked more than others. I'm not fond of this one. Now, uh, they do the thing of Lex being kind of like a human supremacist, or like the idea that like, you know, he's afraid or hates all aliens and stuff, which we've seen done plenty of times before, but in this movie it seems to be without any subtlety. Uh, there are layers, la a few layers of subtlety in the writing of the character, and there's a lot of things that I do like of what they've done with this character. For example, there's a great little moment with the character where we see him in like the red beard and a long red wig uh, reminiscent of the way the character looked during the death of Superman uh, story arc and it turns out that it's like just a ruse like some of that stuff's fine the real problem I have is Rain Wilson as Lex Luthor now like I like Rain Wilson he's a good actor I really enjoy him but at no point in this movie did I buy into any part of his delivery of Lex Luthor like 
every time I heard it, it sounded like a kid putting on a voice. Like, it's just so smarmy and like, yeah, and yeah. And like, I don't, it's not like a Jesse Eisenberg Lex Luthor where he's like, oh, over the top and crazy and woo But like, at the same time, it's so cartoony in a movie where like, yeah, it has big over the top cartoon stuff, but everything else in the movie is handled pretty seriously. And Lex Luthor, it just, he feels like he's from a different movie. It feels like a different tone. He's the only one in this movie who feels like a character from a freaking kid show. And again, the character, the way he's written, is actually written pretty well. And I feel like if you had another actor brought in to do the voice, that they could have brought something really special to that. Uh, a good example being, like, I love James Marsters in Superman Doomsday as Lex Luthor, even though it's a totally different weird take on that character, but he brings something special to it that allows it to work and flow, whereas I feel Rain Wilson is the odd man out, and I've made no secret about the fact that I'm not fond of uh, several of the voice casting for this DC animated universe, uh, but I think out of all the ones I've heard, he's one of the most out of place, but like your next like kid-friendly show, make him Lex Luthor over there and he's fine, you know, but like in this, no, it didn't work for me. Alright guys, enough complaining, on to the stuff that I liked. I think that almost everything I like can be, like, the reasoning behind it, it can all be boiled down into two words and one letter, and that is Peter J. Tomasi. Holy crap, dude. As I said earlier, this is written better than any of the DC animated movies from this universe. Like, it is mind-blowing how big a step forward it is in terms of the writing, which really bums me out that he's not writing the follow-up, but, like, we'll see what happens with that. But, yeah, like, all the things that I thought weren't going to work in terms of the way that this universe had been built up, like the, the Lois Lane Superman thing, where I was like, how's that going to work? He makes it work so great. Like, basically, they've been in a relationship for a little while, she doesn't know he's Superman, and, like, he's struggling with how to tell her, and literally, like, he's getting ready to tell her and tells her literally right as Doomsday is attacking, and, like, the, makes it so cool and, like, tragic, you know what I mean? Because, like, we're seeing them grow into the iconic love that we know, and it gets, like, ripped away. And even though we know Superman's going to come back, the way that it's written and the way that it's handled and the way they deal with that relationship based on Tomasi's script is so solid and it drags you into those characters, makes you empathize with them and makes you care about them. It even makes you see past the fact that these clearly aren't the most iconic like representations of those characters. And in terms of the Wonder Woman stuff, now I know I've heard a lot of people complaining about the way that Tomasi wrote Wonder Woman in this movie. Uh, I think she's been done better than she's been done in the last few DC movies, uh, animated movies anyway. And also it's very important to note that he is doing a version of the New 52 Wonder Woman. And in that case, I feel that he wrote her very well, as in Rosario Dawson performed it very well, and I really like the dynamic of the relationship between Clark and Wonder Woman, where they are exes now who are still friends, and, like, they're still on good terms, and, like, I have a couple of friendships with exes that are kind of very similar, so it made that, again, something I could relate to. And in general, his characterization across the board was really great. Like, they switch out the Justice League of America with the main Justice Leaguers, and we get to see a few little scenes with them that are so well written that like it really endears you to the characters it's like I've liked Flash in this movie more than I've liked most of the Flashes I like Green Lantern in this movie more than I've liked most of the like Green Lantern performances or that have come in these like movies um, although part of that might be because they brought Nathan Fillion back and he's my ultimate voice for Green Lantern he's the only one I want to voice Green Lantern Hal Jordan I have a meeting with the headmaster at Damien's boarding school <laughs> no way Batman has a parent teacher conference that's great. Are you in the PTA too? Tell me you're in the PTA. <clears throat> I'm Batman. We need more chaperones for homecoming. Who has to be convinced to sign up? <laughs> <clears throat> I'm just joking. I think that's great. Is he still glaring at me? 
everything's handled so well. Like, even the things like I was talking about were like, where they didn't do things from the comic that I wanted to see, like stuff from Funeral for a Friend. We don't get that. But the moments we do get are so good. Like, frickin' the Kents showing up to Superman's funeral and having to stand back with the masses and having, like, them getting too close to the line and having a cop tell them that they can't come any closer. He was a friend. Really sorry, sir. I need you to step back a bit. Is she gonna be okay? Yes, officer. It's just a big loss for everyone. Yeah, Superman was kind of like family, wasn't he? So well done. It's so good. And then there's this absolutely perfect moment in context of all of these movies and where the way the characters have developed, where, like, it's just Bruce Wayne looking out the window, like, looking stern, as usual, and Damien standing by him, and for a moment Damien looks up at his dad and then leans over and puts his arm around him. And it's just like... We've seen a lot of development with those characters, and like the way that Tomasi sets up a few things earlier on, it reminds us of that relationship, and this moment really pays off. Basically, what I'm saying is almost everything. Like he's the perf Tomasi, Tomasi, Peter J. Tomasi. He recently wrote Super Sons and Superman for Rebirth, which is some of my favorite Superman-related stuff. He's just the perfect person for them to have got to do this. I really wish he was writing the follow-up, and almost every moment that I really love out of this movie can clearly be traced back to his interpretation of taking like this universe that they've created and then taking the original story and figuring out a way to mesh them together to kind of create the perfect hybrid, honestly. Beyond the stuff that I'm uh, attributing directly to Peter J. Tomasi, there's also a lot of other cool stuff in this movie. A uh, good example is like we get a much expanded roster of like known characters. It's not that big, but it's a few of them, and it really helps populate this world a little bit more. So we get the introduction of Hawkman, which I know some people have been kind of bummed out that it wasn't Hot Girl. I get it. I love Hot Girl. But ever since Dark Knight's Metal, the DC has been putting a big push on Hawkman, and he's currently got a new book that is out right now, so I'm sure that that's kind of part of it, hoping that people will see him and take a bigger interest in him in kind of the comics. Uh, we also got to see Martian Manhunter, which was really cool. Um, we finally got to see a little bit more with Ma and Pa Kent. That was all really solid stuff. We saw Cat Grant. Uh, we also saw the introduction of a few other, like, staple characters, specifically the one that I was really happy about was seeing Bibbo show up. Because, like, throughout the whole Death and Return of Superman arc, there's a few, like, key moments with Bibbo that are so good. And they really do, like, in this movie, use Bibbo the way he's supposed to be used. Like, he represents the people and the way that people feel about Superman. And he is kind of like one of our audience windows into this world. Like, we can relate to Bibbo because we're just everyday folks, and Superman is freaking Superman. So when Bibbo's heart breaks, like, your heart breaks, and it's awesome. And also, it just is another one of those situations, which I know they're going to use him some more in the next movie. Like, it's going to show the true power of Superman. is isn't in his superpowers. It isn't in his strength. It's the way that he affects the people around him. The way that his message gets through. The way that he inspires the best in everyday people and inspires them to reach higher, you know, to do better, to be the best they can be. And that's the true power of Superman, and Bibbo has always been a perfect sounding board for that, and in this movie he serves that function beautifully. And I know I kind of mentioned it earlier, guys, but I really have to reiterate that the action sequences in this movie are just dope! Man, some of the best action I've seen from one of these movies. It is brutal. Like, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of blood, but it doesn't get super gory. But, like, they make no qualms about showing Doomsday causing massive damage, killing tons of people. It's not like we ever see a kid die or anything like that. But, like, man, he causes massive damage, kills tons of people, and then, like, once the heroes show up, the fights are really solid. Uh, the only character who I feel kind of gets lost in the fray in terms of the fighting is Batman. But, like, really, what's Batman going to do? And he still made it better than the friggin' Blue Beetle did in the actual comic book. Um, and also, I think that, like, it works really well because Batman, while he's human and has no powers, we do know him to be one of the most determined characters. So when we see Batman at a point where, like, he's not able to carry on, and he's not pushing himself to carry on like he normally would, that definitely sells the gravity of the moment. 
Uh, but in terms of his action stuff, he's kind of limited in what he can do. Batman strangely serves a very different function in this movie than he normally does. But he still has a cool, a few little cool dope moments where he's trying out different techniques on uh, Doomsday. I, it's one of the few times where I kind of wish that they had had Batman whipping out more like gadgets and stuff. Uh, but anyway, beyond that, the action's really solid. It's brutal. It's fast paced. And it works so well. Like the editing on the film is so good in tying different action beats to emotional beats that like the pacing of it, just the timing of it is so freaking solid. And I have to admit, like when, because the action is so good and it is so brutal, like there's like, like the last 30 minutes of this movie, 20 minutes of it is a fight scene, which is kind of what I expected. And at the beginning of it, you are so psyched. You are so into it, but the fight is so brutal and it goes on and on that by the time you get to the end of that fight, like, yeah, you're worn down. Like, it's still a good fight. I'm not saying it's hard. Like, it's hard to watch, but it's not bad. You know what I'm saying? Like, you, it, the movie makes you feel the way you would feel if you were watching your hero get the life beaten out of him. And that's so great. Like, I'm not even going to lie. Like, it was hard for me not to cry towards the end of this movie. And again, that action... And the tone of that action and the pacing of that action leads so perfectly into that emotional peak of the movie, the loss of our hero. Like, it's all planned out so well, and it all flows so well, and everybody gets, like, a cool moment, and we get to see everybody kind of get totally taken out and bitch slapped by Doomsday, and it all just looks awesome, guys. In conclusion, guys, I really like Death of Superman. Like, I really enjoyed it, and I highly recommend it. Uh, it definitely has some flaws, like I said, but it, those flaws are completely overshadowed by all the awesome things that this movie does. And I would be really excited for the sequel to it, or the next installment, uh, but as I said, Peter J. Tomasi's not writing it, so I'm a little bit worried, but just seeing how good this was, and seeing, like... The reception that it's getting, even though really a lot of people aren't talking about it, but the people who are seem to kind of uniformly really enjoy it. So I'm hoping maybe that'll mean that like they'll put a little bit more effort into the polishing of the post-production of the next one. So yeah, guys, that's what I thought. But what did you guys think? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you like this video, please leave a like and share it with some friends. Also, if you're not subscribed, make sure to subscribe and hit that little bell so you can get updates on all the dope content I'll have coming out in the future. Furthermore, guys, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram or Twitter, I will have the links for that in the description below. Thank you very much, children of the screen. Hope you all have a good one. Nerd Scum, out.